the Sapphire Pure Black 990 FX BIOS. It is an American Megatrends BIOS. Uh, first going into the BIOS, you're presented with the main screen as well as three separate blocks of monitoring down the bottom. Uh, on the left side, you've got all of your frequency settings, CPU front side bus frequency, memory size, memory frequency. In the center, you've got your main voltages, CPU voltage, dim voltage, north bridge voltage, and your positive 12 volt. Over on the right side, you've got temperatures for the CPU, north bridge, and system temp. They're going to stay there through all the screens of the BIOS. Opening up, you're presented with the main screen of the BIOS, which gives you your BIOS information, as well as allowing you to set your clock. Also, just total uh, system memory information. Moving over to performance, You've got frequency configuration. Simple screen allows you to adjust CPU frequency, CPU ra ratio, your CPU north bridge frequency, and your HT link frequency. Memory configuration, nice memory configuration screen, memory multiplier, uh, SPD profile allowing you to define your own settings or set it to auto, let it read the SPD. Down the bottom, you've got the memory strength settings. Go in, you can adjust absolutely everything in your memory. Very nicely laid out memory screen. Voltage configuration. Once again, pretty simple screen. Uh, CPU vCore is controlled not in absolutes. It is a plus and minus situation, as well as auto. CPU north bridge, same way. Everything else is set by an absolute. For example, uh, voltage of your dims can be set if you want it at 1.5, 1.6, whatever you're looking for, you can set it directly to that voltage. Moving over to advanced, you've got your OPROM options, PCI subsystem settings, as well as PCI express settings, your ACPI settings for sleep and hibernation, your S5 wake up settings, you can actually set it to your system to wake at a fixed time every day, or you can set a dynamic time, uh, say you want to set it to wake in six hours. CPU configuration, kind of an odd place for the CPU configuration, it's kind of stuck in the middle of the advanced, but uh, limit CPU ID, AMD colon quiet, C1E, SVM, all the way down you've got your turbo core on and off, unlock cores, core leveling mode, uh, a little bit different. You can go, since this is bulldozer ready, one core per unit, or you can have as many cores enabled as you like, obviously in multiples of two. Core C6 state, high performance computing mode, and down the bottom you've got all your CPU information. Onboard devices, your Bluetooth, your LANs, USB 3 controllers, Marvell controller, audio, and CPU temperature show on debug report. IDE configuration, USB configuration, Super IO configuration uh, gives you the option, of course, on power loss, how the computer is going to come back on, powered off, powered on, or its last state. Hardware monitor, it's going to give you all of your PC health information, all of your temperatures and voltages. Down the bottom, smart fan configuration allows you to choose between linear and PWM fan for your CPU fan, and manual or smart fan setups for your CPU, power, and chassis fans. That also includes, uh, you can put in the temperature of your highest setting for the fan, temperature for the lowest setting of the fan, and allow you to adjust the highest and lowest setting of the fan itself. Over in the chipset, north bridge, memory configuration, and dim slot information. South bridge, SATA configuration, and USB configuration. Boot devices, boot prompt timeout, number lock state, quiet and fast boot, you gate A20 options, option ROM messages, interrupt 19 capture, and of course your boot options. And more than one hard drive allows you to sequence them as you like. Security allows you to set an administrator or user password. And your exit screen 
allows you to save the changes you've made and exit, discard the changes and exit, save the changes and reboot, the, reset the computer and reboot, discard and reset. You, as you go along, you can save changes so you can go back, tweak, make sure you've done everything right. You can discard any changes you've made. You can restore factory defaults. You can save your current changes as user defaults and restore those user defaults. So once you've got your system set up, you can set it as the defaults and when you're playing around, you can always restore it to exactly where you've started. Uh, there are no options for extended profiles or anything of that nature. Down the bottom, you've got your boot override, obviously boot into immediately into any of the drives that are present and BIOS flash utility. So the Sapphire BIOS uh, American Megatrends is very well laid out, pretty intuitive, uh, easy to get around. A little odd that the CPU configuration is stuck down in the middle of advanced settings rather than performance settings, but we can overlook that. But uh, as I say, very easy to get around, very powerful, very complete BIOS.